Thank you. It's nice to be acknowledged. Good morning, everyone. So glad that you are here on this beautiful, beautiful Alberta morning. It's going to get even better as the temperature warms up during the day. We continue this morning in the season of Lent, looking at the I am sayings of Jesus in the Gospel of John. And we're going to look at I am the gate for the sheep this morning. But we are also following our service this morning. are going to have our annual uh, meeting. And so hopefully you can stay for that. We'll take a little bit of a break, five, ten minutes in between, um, so we can set up. We're going to try to do um, Zoom as well for those who can't make it this morning. So make sure that we get that all set up before we start the meeting. So um, just know if you want to stick around, just hang out for a couple of minutes between the service and the meeting to, to do that. As we're coming back, just a reminder to you that if you want to give offerings on Sunday morning, there's a basket by the door, and you can put an envelope with money in there. The debit machine is out as well to give in that way. Um, and tomorrow, to mark kind of the first year, the year since the beginning of COVID when everything shut down, the Ministerial Association in Strathmore um, has provided a way for you to pray during the day from 10 to 6. Something came out in the Strathmore um, paper that gives a way to pray for in each hour during that time period. I think that um, Brandy will send it out as well as an email to you if you don't get the paper to be able to, uh, to see that. So that's tomorrow to kind of pray as our community together for this year that has just passed. It is important to register for worship. Um, we have a fixed um, limit because of fire code and hoping that in the next few weeks that's going to be um, increased, but right now it's at um, a certain limit that we have to meet, and um, so it's very important that you, when the link is sent out on Monday, that you register through the link. Um, if perhaps those of you who are here, or those of you who are watching online, that you can't get the link to work, um, you can call Brandy, but don't just call Brandy to register because that's a lot of phone calls for her. So if you can register online, that would be wonderful to be able to do that. Um, and again, our annual meeting is after our service. There's an agenda and financial statements out on a table by the door for you to pick up for that meeting. But we are glad that you are here, that we are together as the people of God to worship God this morning in person and online, for together we are the body of Christ, um, energized by his presence with us, um, excited about what the Holy Spirit's going to do as we lift our voices in praise and as we open the Word of God this morning. So let us worship together. Welcome, as Heidi said, 
would you stand with me as we enter in? And I just want to open by saying, God, we welcome you here to this place. And we ask in this moment that you would prepare our hearts for what you have for us in this day. God, help us to be open to hearing your voice. God, help us to be open to seeing you in all the ways that you present yourself, whether it's through our friends that we don't see during the week, whether it's um, through your word, whether it's through something someone says or a song that is sung. Help us to be open. Be our ears and our eyes. Be in our hearts. As we worship you this morning, we give you glory and honor in all that we do. Amen.
as we are coming into our AGM after the service, um, it would be easy to look back on this year and see all the hard things and the, um, the frustrations. The I mean, it's been a heavy year. And, uh, but I chose this song to bring out to find our gratefulness, to see God's faithfulness in this year. So um, I just wondered in this moment, even if it's just to yourself, but it could be out loud too, even though you're behind a mask, um, what are those things? How have you seen God's faithfulness? more family time.
you, Laura. Let's see. Here it is. Let's pray together. Jesus, the good shepherd of the sheep. We come before this, your word this morning, which is food for us. And as we open up your word, may we hear your voice clearly speaking to us, moving deep into our hearts. And may the Holy Spirit enliven those words to remind us that we belong to you and to no other shepherd. Bless us as we open your word this morning. Amen. When Jesus seeks to describe who he is, and what he came to do. It shouldn't be surprising to us that he talks about himself as a good shepherd and using the language of sheep and shepherds. After all, some of the most famous Old Testament patriarchs were shepherds, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, and David, and the prophet Moses, Amos. And for many in Israel, herding sheep was a way of life. And so it was familiar to Jesus' hearers. And so when he wanted to talk and share and get people on board with who he was and what he came to do, it's not surprising. He uses sheep and shepherds as a way to do that. And so in this chapter 10 of the Gospel of John, we actually have two I am statements of Jesus, and they're about sheep. This morning, I'm going to look at one of those statements called I am the gate for the sheep. And in a couple of weeks, Rob Gertzen's going to help us look at I am the good shepherd. Now, this passage we're going to look at this morning from the first part of the Gospel of John in chapter 10 is a little confusing, not only because it interweaves these two images um, and these two I am statements, but because Jesus also communicates kind of several ideas through this image we're going to look at this morning, this metaphor of the door. So hopefully I can tease that out a little bit for you as we look at um, this next I am statement. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to chapter 10 in the Gospel of John whether you have your phone or iPad when you're at home and have that with you, or if you want to look at the screen, um, the verses are there. And I'm going to be reading from the message this morning. Let me set this before you as plainly as I can. If a person climbs over or through the fence of a sheep pen instead of going through the gate, you know he's up to no good, a sheep rustler. The shepherd walks right up to the gate, and the gatekeeper opens the gate to him, and the sheep recognize his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he gets them all out, he leads them, and they follow because they are familiar with his voice. They won't follow a stranger's voice, but will scatter because they aren't used to the sound of it. Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again. I will be explicit then. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. 
A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so that they would have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. Now, the images that Jesus uses in this passage might sound unfamiliar to our 21st century um, ears, but to Jesus' audience, the scene he paints with his words would be very familiar. When shepherds took their flocks out to graze, particularly in the desert, they were herded at night into walled enclosures that either backed up against a cliff or were backed into a canyon. Such enclosures had waist-high walls and only one place for which the sheep to come and go through the gate. And at that gate, either the, the shepherd would sit and lay down during the night to keep guard over his sheep, or they would pile up thorn bushes in that doorway. One of the main points that Jesus is making in these two segments of our passage this morning concerns that connection between the voice of the shepherd and the voice who John calls, uh, Jesus calls, at least in the words I read, as sheep wrestlers and strangers and thieves. It is the voice of the shepherd that connects to the larger role that the shepherd has as the gatekeeper for the sheep. I want to look first at the voice and the actions of what the message calls sheep wrestlers, strangers, and thieves. Now these first verses of John 10, Jesus creates this word picture to communicate a larger truth. And that's something Jesus did all the time. He used metaphor, he used story, so that the people could connect with what he was saying, with their lived life, to have an understanding of who he was and what the kingdom of God was all about. Jesus says that thieves and wrestlers and strangers don't use the gate which would be the normal way for one who cared for the sheep to go in and out to tend the sheep. Instead, they climb up over the wall of the sheepfold. They have no right to go in through the gate, the correct way to get at the sheep, because the sheep do not belong to them. And the only way to get to them is through subterfuge and treachery. And because the sheep do not belong to them, the sheep don't recognize their voice. The wrestlers and the thieves and the strangers can call the sheep all they want, but the sheep won't follow because they don't know the voice of those people. My uncle Bruce is a psychologist, and he trained his Pyrenees sheepdog named Druk to take only food from his hand. And even if you've had a relationship with Druk, you could go up to Druk and you could tell him, you know, here, Druk, wonderful food for you to take. And Druk wouldn't take it at all. And then my uncle would come up, same food in his hand, and tell Druk to eat. And Druk would eat the food out of his hand. Now, my uncle didn't train him to do that because they lived in a bad neighborhood where people might give him their dog bad food. He did it because he wanted to prove that he could, that he had that ability to change the mind pattern of his dog. Well, if you have a dog or any other pet that responds to your voice, you know the importance of using your voice to make those commands come true and real for your pet. My dog is pretty good at obeying my voice over all others. Other people can tell my dog to sit or to come, and usually she doesn't do either one. In fact, she'll look to me to see if it's okay to follow and obey the voice of somebody other than myself. But when I give her a command, most of the time she obeys right away. 
And that's because I've had her for a long time. I got her when she was six months old, and next month she's going to be six years old. And so we've had a long time to build a relationship. She knows I am her alpha dog, and so she listens to my voice and has learned to obey. Who are the thieves and the wrestlers and the strangers who talk to and maybe give commands to the sheep, but they don't listen to that voice? Who are these people that Jesus is warning his listeners not to listen to? Any voice that seeks to draw people away from Jesus, any voice that inflicts harm on God's people, those are voices that Jesus says, don't listen to those voices. The thieves and rustlers and strangers know that the sheep are vulnerable. And so they cloak their voices in Jesus' talk. But all they really seek to do is to pull people away from Christ. Now John wrote this gospel, but he also wrote letters that we have at the end of the New Testament And the churches that he wrote those letters to had false teachers in them. People who wanted uh, the congregations that John wrote letters to to listen only to their voice and not to the voice of John. They claimed to know the teachings of Jesus, but those thieves and wrestlers and strangers sought to draw people to themselves and not to Jesus. By teaching that Jesus was not the Christ, and claiming the authority of the Holy Spirit for themselves, and so that they could draw people away from the church and from the relationship with Jesus. Unfortunately, there are still sheep wrestlers and thieves and strangers in the church today. They claim to know all the answers. They say, listen to my teaching. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, my life's not really great, but my teachings are from God. They teach that their way is the only way. And there is no life apart from them and their teaching. And it isn't just in the church that we find false teachers. In these turbulent turbulent times that we are living in, when so much seems uncertain. It's easy to listen to anyone who claims to have all the answers to the challenges we face. The only way that the wrestler and the thief and the stranger can get access to the sheep is through trickery or subtlety. Their intention is not to care for the sheep, but to use the sheep for their own purposes, for their own gain. So then who are we to listen to? Jesus tells us, the sheep. We as sheep should listen to the voice of the good shepherd. We need, though, to be discerning listeners. Do the voices we listen to teach what Jesus taught? Do the voices we listen to teach what is written in God's word? And if the answer is no, then we need discernment of the Holy Spirit to test any voice that we are unsure of that seeks to pull us away from our relationship with Jesus by telling us how best to live out our faith. So then Jesus says, if you're not to listen to the voices of those people, I want you to listen to me. And this is why. You see, the the sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd because the shepherd has the right to be with his sheep. He is the keeper of the gate. The shepherd opens the gate 
for his sheep. He calls them by name. He cares for each one, knows each one, knows their name and their character and the way in which they act and live. He leads them out to find pasture and gives them, as the message says, real and eternal life, more and better life than you could ever dream of. The sheep follow the shepherd because he has proven to be reliable, to be faithful, to prioritize the needs of the sheep over anything else. The shepherd knows each and every one of his sheep in an intimate way. The Middle Eastern shepherd is well known for having a personal devotion to their sheep. I think that's why Jesus uses the metaphor that he does in several places in the gospel, especially in Luke 15 where he talks about the the shepherd leaving all the rest of the other sheep to go and hunt for the one that's been lost because the shepherd cares for his sheep. And the shepherd often talks to his sheep and maybe sings to them. Some shepherds carry a short flute And they use a repeated tune so that the flock knows it as an auditory cue to come and follow that shepherd. During the Palestinian uprising in the 80s, um, and an Israeli army decided to punish a village near Bethlehem because they didn't pay their taxes. And the officer in charge rounded up all the animals in the village and put it in a pen with a barbed wire Um, enclosure on top and later in the week a woman came and pleaded with the officer could she please have her sheep back because her husband was dead and that was the only means of income that she had the officer pointed to this large group of animals in the pen and said laughingly if you can find your animal amongst all of these you can find them you can take them home The woman's son brought out a little flute and began to play a song. And one by one, heads started popping up in the pen. And as he played, the sheep of that shepherd, they all walked out of the gate and came to the shepherd of those sheep. See, the true shepherd knows his sheep. And they will listen to his voice, or maybe to the sound of his flute. Because where oftentimes the shepherd leads the sheep, it is dangerous, with many challenges. But a skilled and courageous shepherd can lead his sheep with just his voice or with a simple tune. And he can lead the sheep out of the sheepfold to find food, and water, and safe places where they can flourish. This shepherd will guard over his sheep at night by literally laying down in the entrance to the sheepfold. But the next day, he will get up and call his sheep and lead them out of the sheepfold to find water and a place to graze. And while his sheep are doing their sheep thing during the day, the shepherd watches over them, making sure that no predators, no thieves could come near to his sheep. And then at the end of the day, he gathers them together and gets them back into the safety of the sheepfold through the gate so they can bed down at night. Jesus is that good shepherd. And Jesus is the gate for the sheep. All who come in to the sheepfold that Jesus is the gate of, and they will claim him as their savior, then they will be cared for. And they will find rest for their souls. They will find living water to refresh dry spirits. They will find safety from the dangers of the world. But most importantly, Jesus, the good shepherd, who is also the gate for the sheep, gives life to the sheep in his sheepfold, a better life than they ever could have dreamed of. We, too, 
are to follow the voice of Jesus by deepening our relationship with him in prayer, by reading God's word and recognizing his voice in the words of scripture. And when we align our voice to the voice of Jesus, we will find abundant life, even as we face the challenges that inevitably, inevitably are part of life. When Jesus painted this picture that he was the gate for the sheep, the Jewish religious leaders who heard him didn't get what he was talking about. I think it was because they were very far removed from the dirty work of shepherding and they lived in their ivory hours, towers of, of thought and study. But Jesus told, tells us that that he told the simple story, but those religious leaders had no idea what he was talking about, and so he tries again. But this time, he doesn't mince his words. He says it very plainly, I am the gate for the sheep. And as that gate, Jesus makes sure that only the sheep of his, of, of his um, flock know his voice. And that the sheep desire to be part of his flock. And they enter into through the gate to find safety in the sheepfold. The sheep of Jesus' flock are protected from strangers and rustlers and thieves. Who decide to take shortcuts to the sheep. They want the sheep not because they can care for them or want to care for them, but they want the authority, the recognition, the adulation that their false leadership gives them. As the gate for the sheep, the good shepherd Jesus provides pastures where his sheep can find rest from the weariness of dealing with the challenges they face and where they can find refreshment for their souls that have been parched by sickness and grief and joblessness and challenging marriage or family relationships or monetary stress. And even in the midst of whatever desert we may find ourselves in, Jesus tells us that as sheep in his sheepfold, we will find a better life than we could ever have dreamed of. I don't know about you, but this last year has felt like we have been living in a desert. In the midst of uncertainty and chaos and the challenges we have faced, it is important to know that there is a voice that we should listen to who has the answers that we need. If we listen and follow the voice of Jesus, and because we know that Jesus will be a constant in our life, Jesus never changes, even though our life and our world changes. And he has woven his words and his teachings into the very fabric of our lives if we follow him and know his voice. And if we know the ways into the sheepfold and out of it because Jesus is the gate, we can follow in his footsteps. When people are in crisis, when they are surrounded by the dangers of the desert, they will turn to any shepherd offering a way out. Voices that claim to have the answers to the problems we face. Voices that claim to speak for Jesus. But only a relationship with Jesus, who is the gate, will help us listen to the only voice that leads to refreshment for our soul. The only voice that we find in Jesus that will give rest for our weary spirits. Only in Jesus will we be protected from the dangers of the valley of the shadows that we all from time to time walk through. And only in Jesus will we find abundant life, overflowing cups of blessing, and the sure knowledge that mercy and grace and love and forgiveness will follow us all the days of our life.
Jesus the gate, came into our world to open a way to himself. A gate that invites all those who enter to know peace and love in abundance. When you are part of Jesus' sheepfold, when you listen to his voice, you will live a better life than you could ever dream of. Whether you are living in the desert or you are resting by green pastures, in green pastures, by quiet streams. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, you are the gatekeeper. The one who invites us to be a part of your flock. To know your voice. To hear your gentle prodding to walk in your ways. For it is only as we are sheep in your flock will we experience life, better life than we could ever imagine. But God, it calls us and challenges us to listen to your voice. There's a lot of competing voices that come into our world every day. Teach us as we pray and develop a closer relationship with you. Teach us as we open up your word and make your words part of our life that we would only hear your voice that we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can discern what voices we should just turn off because they have nothing to do with you. God, we want quiet streams and restful pastures. We want comfort and protection when we go through the valley of the deepest shadow. We want cups that overflow with blessing but we find those things only in a relationship with you. So God, for any this morning who are far from you because of circumstances in in their life or uncertainty about who you are and what you want, I just pray, God, that you would draw them to yourself. May you as the gate for the sheep Help them to see the care and protection and love that you bring to the flock that you love. Thank you, God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, that knows us so well, that even when we maybe run away from the flock, that you will drop everything to find us. How marvelous and amazing is your love and care for us. So teach us each day to listen to the voice of our shepherd Jesus who gives us everything we could ever want. We ask this in the name of Jesus who is the gate of the sheep and our Savior friend. Amen.
take a few minutes after service ends to kind of set up for the service I mean for the AGM so um, chat amongst yourselves and um, we'll hopefully start in about 10 minutes or so after the service ends as we get everything set up so go forth knowing who our true shepherd is following his path secure in the knowledge that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life amen